Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to tackle probably the most difficult coaster type to build, the 4D coaster. So here are the 4D coaster trains that I've come up with. I made it have free spinning seats and made it look as similar to the real thing as possible. Right now, I'm going to put these trains through some trials so I'll know what I'll be working with when I build the actual layout. I'm going to quickly put together a raven turn. This element is really crucial in seeing the limitations of my trains. 4D coasters have like two main elements that are unique to its coaster type. First is the raven turn, which is what I'm building now, but they also have lie to fly elements like those you see on flying coasters. These elements are where you see the seats flip on the 4D trains the most. And later on, both of these elements will make an appearance on my finished layout. So far, the tests don't seem very promising. The raven turn is too tall, so I'll shrink it. This will tell me how much speed the train will lose as it transitions to the next element. I shrink the raven turn by about 3 blocks each time. This test failed as well. This is the shortest I'll make it. I shrunk the original raven turn by about 15 blocks already. And luckily it made it. I got some slow-mo shots and it shows the seats flipping, which is really exciting to see. These trials had some very interesting results. Even though the trains lose a significant amount of speed very fast, there's still a chance I can still make a decent layout with it. So let's get on to layout one. Yes, I made multiple layouts. This one was going to be based off of Engineica, but after considering the trials more, I realized I needed to change how I'm going to go about this project. Even though this layout was never finished, it did teach me something very valuable. I realized that you can make a half loop extremely small if you really wanted to. This is very surprising to me because I always thought that CDX track was too tight or had too much tension to make super tight half loops. But here I start building it. I start by making a long straight piece of track with cross ties sitting closely together. I take the straight piece of track and bend it very carefully down under the supports. The pre-made straight track is essential for keeping the inversion from breaking. I still had to go in with a weight to anchor the element down. Finally, I readjusted the cross ties to get rid of any kinks that would get the train stuck. And using that formula, you can make a super tight inversion. Here is the train gliding through perfectly. Before I transition to layout 2, let me tell you a little bit about how 4D coasters work. 4D coasters really have two tracks. They work together to make the seats spin. The upper track is for the train and where you sit. This part of the train features a pinion, which allows your seat to spin. Below the tracks is a rack. The rack controls how much your seat spins. As I move the train along the track, you can see that the rack spins the pinion and spins your seat. This is pretty much how a real life 4D coaster functions and how it gives a very intense ride experience. This rack and pinion system allows your seat to invert in a controlled manner. This is unlike my 4D coaster trains. My seats are free spinning. They rely on forces from the layout to naturally invert. I made the seats unbalanced so they will flip every time the train goes upside down. I'll use this to my advantage on layout 2. A big change in my layouts is that layout 2 is going to feature a launch. Real life 40 coasters don't have a launch, so this is pretty unrealistic. But my trains need a launch in order to get back to the station. A lift tool will not cut it for the trains to have enough speed. I took the design from the launch of my Mr. Freeze Reverse Blast Coaster and repurposed it here. It's pretty much the same design with the same mechanics. Here I finished the ratchet system and put in a lever. I will be building this layout backwards so I can save as much speed as I can. This is the turnaround from the brake run. I keep my brake runs angled downwards so that the trains will naturally want to roll back into the station. Reinforcing this coaster is going to be of big importance because the trains are very heavy and will make the track flex. Going into the brake run, I'm going to make a barrel roll. Barrel rolls is another element that you don't see on real life 40 coasters, but I think it will be very interesting to see one on my layout. Like what I did with the half loop, I built a straight track first, then I'm going to twist it to connect to the supports. Then I'm going to heavily reinforce the barrel roll by adding a few more supports around the element. I'm going to give a quick test to make sure the train will flow smoothly back to the station. Next, I'm going to make a small drop into the barrel roll. Here, I'll make sure that there's enough speed that the train can make it back to the station.
perfect. That's plenty of speed. Here's a little slow-mo shot to see how the seats spin going through the barrel roll. Now I'm going to plan out a large turn. This is like a calm helix to give the riders a quick breather after going through the very intense elements coming right before it. I extended the launch a little more just to make sure that there's enough clearance from the helix. I want to make the incline from the launch go directly in the center of the helix. Here I want to put in one of those fly to lie transitions you'll see on a 40 coaster. Let's build up those supports and put the tracks on. Give the helix a test. Now let's build that fly to lie transition. This is basically just going to be a barrel roll again, but it's not going to go a full 360 degrees. Here I'm twisting the track into that bank I want to end up with. Every time I build a inverted part of the track, I'm going to keep the supports very beefy because these tracks are going to be the most prone to breaking. I'm trying to keep these supports as low to the ground as possible. I noticed while building that the supports are basically multiplying as I build up. The brake run is one of those support pieces off the ground. The barrel roll is 2, the drop is 4, and this lie to fly element is 8. If I keep building like this, it will be over 32 support pieces tall, which is way too tall for these supports to handle. So I need to be very careful on how high I build these elements. And that is the biggest struggle I ran into while building this coaster. I just finished another turn, so let's give it a quick test. I'm not really worried about the speed from that test. The next elements are definitely going to make the train go much faster. If you look closely, you can see the seats flip from the train transitioning from inverted to sit down. Next, I'm going to build a large half loop coming from the inverted turn. I put down some large supports and put a bunch of cross ties on a large section of track. This element will put a lot of strain on the supports, so I made sure to double reinforce them. Now I'm going to bring down the track and shape the half loop. This element is basically a small raven turn. It's still looking a little wobbly, so I'll add a small section of supports on the back of the track. I'm going to make a quick hill to test this raven turn. You can definitely see the supports getting a little out of hand. It is very tall. This element is going to be another lie to fly transition but it's also going to be mixed with a half loop. It ended up being very bulky, so it went through a lot of changes. The track is still under supported, so I'm going to add a few more supports in that middle section there. The height of the coaster is really starting to ramp up. Let's give it a quick test. The train was going way too fast for that test, so I can luckily take off a few supports and save some height. I fixed that transition so it's more gradual going down, and I made it a little smaller and saved some supports. We are about 3 fourths of the way done with this coaster, so let's do the final test of the video. This coaster is taking a lot of my time and effort, so thank you so much for watching. In the next video, I'm going to finish the track, put in the brakes, and finish the launch.